um, guys, I need to talk. I need to talk to you about something. Okay. Sure, sure. Um, so I don't know if you saw this last week, but Meatloaf finally came out and said what that was in. I would do anything for no. love, but I won't what do that. No, what is it? What is that? Wait, 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 whoa, 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 I'm not ready for this. Okay, hold on. All right, let me. He finally, yeah, he finally came out and said it. He like, this is what it is. Okay, I'm sure. Myself. Okay, I'm ready to hear what that is. Are you ready, Chad? Yeah, yeah. Me Love said that what that was, and I would do anything for love, but I won't do that, is smell a dog's butthole. <laughs> Here's... I, I that's what that's what it is. I feel so tricked. I feel <laughs> it, it, it must be April, not May. Is it May? Because I just feel like a, a goddamn fool. You know Think- what today is? Today today is late pro fools. You just got late pro <laughs> fooled. April showers bring May jokesters. I don't know. I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Not sorry about the meatloaf thing. Sorry about that thing. Hold up. Um, no, Hold that's up. what that's what meatloaf said. He said that's what it was. It, and he, they were singing it in the studio, and he was like, I would do anything for love, but I won't smell a dog's butthole. <laughs> and... They were like, what if we just said that instead of a dog's butthole? Yeah, that's not nearly as catchy. It rolls off the tongue in terms of like syncopation. Yeah. And- yeah. yeah. Huh. It's a good, so. it's, that's A plus engineering and producing right there. Whoever was in the studio at that day and said that. Less is more. Yeah. So to follow through this goof, because I'm, I'll be I, honest. I have, I, was, I, have po- I have a point to make about this. Go ahead, Chad. I have no, I mean, just like I'm also still, I, I, I know this is just a goof and it is, it, we're a bunch of buddies. I was really excited to learn. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got, I'm, I I'm sorry for that. I can apologize for that. We all get April fooled every now and then. I it know. Happens. I just wanted some closure, but um, look, I would do. I would do anything for laughs, and I'd I'd apologize for. Well, that. I'm, it's fine. I get it. You're 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 a, a man of chaos, and uh, I I just feel like there's a way you can make it work, and I'm not sure because your first thing is like. Oh, it must be some sort of sexual thing, right? Like this uh-huh. person must be into stuffing yeah. dogs' buttholes. Yeah. I don't think so. I think it's more like Meatloaf had someone he really cares about. Yeah, and and they have a very sick dog, and they're that's like, "That's what I'm saying." That's what okay. I, that's what I was saying. Chad is. I think this calls into question Meatball's humanity, and meatball. he's a, a man of the humanities. He <laughs> you called him Meatball. <laughs> meatball. I have no clue who Meatball and Josh are, but that, my friend. Damn fine mascot. He's a meatball to me. He's being a real meatball about this dog dog butthole smelling issue. <laughs> issue. He's being a real meatball, okay? <laughs> Which is ironic because honestly, the sick dog got into a bunch of old Italian food, some linguine, yeah. and it made him real sick. And the and the wife, the wife. I think they're I think they're married. I think they're married at this point. It's both of their dogs. And Milo. Well, like, I think they're about to get married. And what he's saying is that he won't adopt her premarital children <laughs> and yeah. premarital dog. Yeah, no, yes. I think they consider the dog as their children, right? And, and, it's, a, and it's a commitment yeah. dog. Yeah, commitment. And she's puppy. like, honey, me, meaty, my, 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 my fiance, please. It's, here's the thing. It, he's not going to save a dog's life. If, if someone was like, did that dog eat the rancid linguine? He's not going to smell its butthole to see if it smells like marinara and find he's out. Like, I won't do it. Because <laughs> he's like, that's your dog. It's not my dog. I have my own dog who has a clean butthole. Uh, I don't let him eat linguine. I don't leave rotting linguine around my house for my dog to get to, okay? I've learned that lesson. You know, every episode of Goose Buds, I, uh-huh. I always wonder, as we start recording, I get really excited, you know, get yeah. to hang out with my friends and talk about yeah. books. I'm like, <laughs> I wonder if this will be the opening where, like, we make a podcast where people who haven't heard the show before can, like, dive in and actually be no. introduced to it. And every no, no, time, no. every time, we, we, we go above and beyond and make an amazing opening. Chad, I, I think we got to look at our alignments here. Dom is definitely chaotic good, I think. <laughs> Th- thank you. Thank you for the good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Chad, lawful good. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. I'll be fine with that. I think you're a, I think you're a lawful good. What would my alignment be? See, uh, I, think, I think lawful good. I think Chad might be lawful neutral. Oh. Yeah, I feel like yeah. lawful because I am that like, I don't like people who cut in line, so that's lawful. Yeah, definitely. But you would smell a dog's butthole to find out if it ate. Well, I think I'm just trying to think in terms of D and D quests to be like if 
I yeah, I would be like, I need to know what this but this dog's allegiances are, and if there's anything in it for me before I decide to smell the dog's butthole. A lawful good person <laughs> would smell the dog's there. butthole without yes. question because the dog needs help. <laughs> yeah. My lord, it does not smell like Lance Schmitz and Linguini. <laughs> Uh, Chad, uh, Fuck. before, b- uh, after the butthole talk and before the goosebuds talk, we got to talk about going to the Ren Fair on oh, Saturday yeah. Oh, yeah. and spending all of five minutes together because it was so crowded. Well, it was so crowded. <laughs> and Dom, I, I mean, I'm going to put him a little bit on blast. Dom's got a lot of friends. Well, this is, uh, you know, I'm not great friends with all of them, but they're all my friend. Mm -hmm. Some of them are great friends, but, Mm -hmm. you know, some of them I just don't know that much. They're all friends of Dom, as we like to call them. An an unwieldy uh, group of uh, my friends. How many people? Came uh, at least 16. Oh! Yeah. I think. Okay. Wow. I'm going to say, I'm going to say 16. Unwieldy is the Um, word for that. Yeah. That's a party. Yeah. That's not even a party. I I mean, that's when when you get to the point where if you guys wanted to go eat somewhere and we have to get multiple tables to eat together, it's become unwieldy. You're a band. You're a band of thieves. (laughs) It was like trying to walk with a crowd of 16 people through the ocean. (laughs) Like it was like walking through the ocean, like neck high. Like it was yeah. awful, and like, like getting getting around was so exhausting. Like yeah. every time you take three steps, a wave hits you, and you have to stop. And well, yeah, and you have yeah. to like step to the side, look for your friends, make sure you're all together. Oh, I hate having to keep track of everyone. You, we need we need to start introducing a thing of like we're all in like subsets. I'm gonna say like maybe not a great word, but cells. You know. Um, right. Chad, right. I'm with you. Not a not a great word, but not a great I word. But like we saying. kind of just create our the, the way the Avengers have the West Coast Avengers and the mm-hmm. Great Lakes yes. Avengers. Like when a group is that big, I think next time we just need to be like, okay, you're part of Group Gamma, you're part of Group mm-hmm. Omega, and like while we're all gonna hang out when we're roaming through crowds of people dressed like jesters and birdmen. And a dude who's dressed like Marty McFly because no one's ever thought of doing that before. Uh, oh, I Ren saw Fair. that guy, and a, a leopard woman was dancing toward me. Oh, I saw that leopard woman. She freaked me out. I didn't. I didn't like. She her scared at all. me. She I like... saw her. This is what I do when people are like dancing in my direction. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. At the Ren Fair, like they're just like you know they're performing and they're coming toward me, and they if if we walk into each other, they're go- we're going to interact in some way. I just do. Like, I just, like, look in the ground in shame, and I'm just like, I have to go. Please move. Please move this way. <laughs> you have to, <laughs> like, Dom, you have I to, do not want to interact you, with those you people. You need to turn sideways and make yourself as thin as possible and hopefully evade their vision. That's how you have yes. to avoid a, dan- a dancer. I don't want uh, to I see. I, but that, I, think, I think you do is if you, because if you avoid the eye contact, uh-huh. that can work sometimes, but there are some performers, be it magicians, uh, oh, Carnival, yeah. like they want Riddleman. to get if you're averting your eyes they want to focus on you they so, smell a mark yeah. so what i like to do is i like to do uh a quick kind of uh when i see a performer coming my way i like to do a quick like eye cont about three seconds of eye contact a quick bow of respect and go i appreciate your art and then move on <laughs> like just like a quick i appreciate your art <laughs> <laughs> i love the deference chat that's lawful neutral yeah, yes like, that is <laughs> <laughs> I have no quarrel with like you, it, but Be I appreciate your way. it. <laughs> I recognize it as art, and I'm moving on. <laughs> uh, we should talk a little bit about, about Ren Fair again. Great time, and, and I wish Dom you had less friends so we could have more, you know, alone time. Well, let's just do something that is just us. That's fine. Hundred people. That's fine. That's me. also fine. Because uh, I like to, I like to kind of move when there's a big group like that. I like to kind of come in and out of the narrative when it's needed. You know, like I'll go off on my own adventure and then like Uncle Benjamin, I'll just show up on a horse with a a, f- a fire mace and save you. That, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I think what we need to acknowledge in Ren Fair is maybe now it's because I've been there like 10 times, the Renaissance Pleasure Fair in California. It's so obvious now how many people are just tripping while they're there. Oh, okay. I think that's now the main entertainment and not in a like mocking them way, but just kind of like it's fascinating to see folks like kind of lose their shit over some French fries. Right. Yeah. You're enjoying their joy. Yeah. More than like any of the, the performance art, more than the bird lady that was stalking around. Like, 
Uh, I didn't see the fawn man that we saw. That I did see the fawn man. He was he had moved his shop magically to a I, new but he was spot. still was he still playing concerning hobbits <laughs> he was not this time he was, he was just playing... the, i've seen him like twice Wait. or maybe Wait. even three times and it, he's always been playing concerning hobbits he's it's such concerning a good hobbits song on like what like a pan <laughs> flute or uh, a pan flute i think an ocarina yes. one time and he's wearing too. like a wooden mask of a tree man <laughs> i think like that concerning hobbits is a beautiful song so it's beautiful it's okay um, oh no but, uh, everything he's doing is great it's just he sometimes also wears a like a wooden i mean he's like a wooden fawn mask which is bordering on the level of like based on the lighting charming or eyes wide shut you know what i mean <laughs> yes yeah a little venetian evil venetian mask look. there's a little tiny thing to like oh if you went mm-hmm. to the back of his tent you're gonna be in trouble you end up in his fuck party which ends in murder Yes. Speaking of fuck parties, I just have to speak about <laughs> the uh, jouster on the. I think it was red and black. It was it was orange and black, but the color that they printed on the flags was definitely orange. I think it was supposed to be red, but it was definitely orange. This is anyway. the jousting tournament at Ren Fair. Yes, this is the joust to the death. The final. Oh, joust I, to I, the didn't, death. I didn't stick around for that part. They fought to the death uh, this time. They fought to the death, and there was blood. Their effects. Whoa. There was a lot of fun. It That's was. It was awesome. It, and the performers were really good. However, the lead. We also. We also got like this, like Obama hope thing that said like what? victory that had some guy on it and that guy was not in the jousting tournament we don't know who the person was i don't have it anymore but uh it was interesting there was all types of swag that was made mm-hmm. um but like they had paper masks and stuff anyway uh, the, the, the lead the lead on the red and black team had he was an older gentleman and he had some veneers like this dude's oh, teeth nice. were freaking white. Sure. And my group kept shouting, chanting teeth. And so did other people, <laughs> which I didn't I did not get involved. I was just, you know, a few edibles deep, just kind of watching this. Sure. You didn't, um, like the dancer, you didn't didn't want to incur the, well, the attention he, of. Teeth also, man. he probably lost not to tell you your intentions. Tom, I'm assuming you're realizing that. That man's probably lost his original teeth in battle. In a joust. In a joust. battle. Yeah. In battle. You're probably right. You're probably right. But I was looking at this gentleman, and I could see how he was performing, and mm-hmm. he was loving it. And he's an older gentleman, but he is in good shape. And I thought to myself, <laughs> that dude takes some hot nudes. Like, that dude, <laughs> on his time off, when he's texting with his friends, whoever they may be, they're getting some hot nudes from that old gentleman. Probably sure. hangs oh. out with the che- with the cheetah, the dancing cheetah lady. I think there's maybe, a bit of a problem, maybe. probably with the role playing and sending them via Snapchat and stuff, because the whole point is like technology doesn't exist, right? There is a there's a Renaissance Snapchat <laughs> app that was created. I bet there's some stupid thing where like it looks like a scroll or a bird sends each one down, and they <laughs> right and they call them chirps because that's like the the tweet yeah. joke. Raven Raven well, chats or Raven snaps. I heard next year they're gonna do they're gonna do full commit to the period, and uh, they are gonna still exchange nudes, but they're gonna have to be sketched like. <laughs> Two minute etching, sketches, like etching. figure poses, and then they're going to be handed down to the the uh, you know the the lucky people who are receiving. Oh, them. like a classical painting version of your nude. Yeah, a woodblock of your nude. Uh, well, yes, original nude. See, see, in my mind, yeah, like I think for the for the to work, it has to be a painting, right? But now we've just accepted that all like nudes because of cell phones always have you holding the phone, right? Like mm-hmm. that's yeah. the pose. So they give you like a bird or just like a brick or something to hold in that pose. But then they paint you like right, a classical you're still, portrait. You you look like you're taking a picture in a mirror, but you're just holding a rock up. Yes, exactly. <laughs> a rock. <laughs> or you're just like holding a hand axe completely naked. <laughs> yeah. A shell, a seashell. <laughs> I would love a little, like, I mean, I don't want to put it around in my home, but I would love a bit of a, a, a really well done nude portrait of me. Sounds great. Of you? <laughs> I'm I'm thinking like a Renaissance painting, you know, like little little cherub cherub body. Uh, tasteful nudes. A tasteful. If I'm Renaissance gonna be nude, nude, if you're gonna paint me nude, paint me in a Napoleon esque stance by a horse nude, but with the hat on. Okay. Okay. I, the hat, uh, I, I the like hat. it. Naked, fully naked, but hat Napoleon hat. Cool horse next to me. Its dong is smaller than my dong, though. Just saying. The horse. Got, I mean, come on. 
I, like I felt like I had to spell it out. I didn't want to spell it out, but I had to spell it out. People, I'm glad you spelled it out. I'm I'm gonna ask that my nude be, uh, if you could use the reference of uh, Saturn eating his uh, son. <laughs> yes. And uh, just you know, instead of Saturn, uh, instead of a, a child being eaten or a man, be a young man being eaten, could I be eating like a sloppy like hoagie? Sure. Again, you're nude, right? Yeah. He's. Oh yeah. Saturn's nude. Oh okay. yeah. No. Yeah. I'm nude. Yeah. Uh, in the in the image that Dom is referring to, there's like tendons and skin ripping off, but that would be uh, tomatoes and and onions. Pulling <laughs> <from it. laughs> and a piece of, yeah. I think a little yeah. mozzarella yeah. like sticking together yeah. would be, be the tendons. A little, a little stringy cheese coming off the. Oh yeah. Oh, that's. Good. Uh, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask no cheese. I am lactose. I've okay. recently, All in right. my old age Wait, here, what? you know, becoming an, a full on adult. How long have you been uh, lactose? I've that I am lactose, and I'm. I'm gonna ask no cheese. Okay, salami's good. Salami. Salami will do the pull too. Salami looks great. Dom, how long have you been lactose? It's been recently. I stopped eating cheese at, at certain moments, and it's been great. I haven't been as painful. In my stomach. Well, okay. see, now uh, I feel like a terrible person because I just gave you a big bunch of gallons of milk for Christmas. I'm real sorry. <laughs> you gave me Christmas milk, and that's how I knew I was lactose. To die. <laughs> you gave him the gift of knowledge, Chad. Yes, you gave me the gift of um, body knowledge. I let you discover your weaknesses, I guess, or something. <laughs> yes, that's, we should move on to Goosebumps. Hey, I just gotta about. say, Chad, that's true neutral right there. That true is, that's neutral. A that is a great point. Uh, Here's milk. Drink it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> we should talk about uh, children's uh, horror books, right? We really should. voted on, voted on by the patrons of uh, goosebumps.com dash Patreon. Yeah, no, goosebumps.com <laughs> slash Patreon. <laughs> dash. I said dash. <laughs> Hashtag meatball. <laughs> meatball. meatball is a good singer um uh, uh of the fine patrons of patreon.com slash goosebuds where anybody can go and sign up and vote on the books that we read sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh and we this time uh you guys' vote is the next book in the series a classic uh at least in terms yes. of covers shocker on shock street Uh, this was the book, uh, the last Goosebumps book I tried to read as a child. Oh. Was it? And after the moment where they fire the gun at the, <laughs> the, the lady driver, yeah, the lady. Yeah. yeah, and then she goofs and she's like, I'm dead. And then she, the next chapter, she's like, JK, LOL, come on, let's go. I was like, I've had enough of this. This always <laughs> happens. I'm done. And I stopped reading. I'm glad that, that that there was a moment in a Goosebumps book that made well, you Well, this cover is fucking dope, right? This, I yeah. never read this book, but uh, I remember this cover because it was incredible. And I believe the uh, background color chosen for this particular book is a gray, which is, you know, that there is, aren't many gray mm-hmm. Goosebumps books. I always thought it stood out. Version. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. it's also one of the few monsters to be... Uh, uh, recognized in the Goosebumps uh, film starring Jack Black. Oh, the the Mantis Ant is in it? Yeah, but I, I always had a problem because, like, I mean, as we'll learn as we talk about this book, the Mantis in the Goosebumps movie did not seem to be what the Mantis actually is, making me think that maybe the writers didn't, like, read these books. Uh, yeah, or art department, maybe. <laughs> I think right? they, I think, yes, I think they skimmed it. I think they maybe skimmed this one. Sure. Uh, you know, I still have not watched Goosebumps too. Just this is a quick sidebar. Have you guys watched? No, it I've been saving no. it to watch it with you guys. It, it, it we looks, should watch it together. It looks so boring. Paul, you need to come back out to LA. We can need to do that. Yeah. Too. Why don't we? You, you know what? We should do a little. We should do a, a bring Paul to LA to watch the movie. Fund. We should do. Th- you know what? We should do. Get probably uh twenty times the amount of los angeles fans that we have that listen to the show Mm -hmm. get 20 times that and then we'll fly paul out here we'll do a live show oh that's a great idea we just got to get 20 times the fans in la that's the that's the goal you know what we need street team street team team. who who wants to be on the street Uh, email us so if you want to start the street team, I'm throwing out a name for you. The Shockers. That's what your street team name is. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm worried the Shockers are going to get pulled into, like, gang warfare in L.A. But, hey, listen, if you want to be part of the it Shockers. Might, it might get violent. 
You're if you right. want a live Goosebumps Bud show, that's what you got to do. You okay? got to risk your life. Well, let's talk about the Shock Street, if we may, right? Let's... Yeah, well, I have full, full disclosure here. Okay. I did not have the time that I thought I would have to read the book today. I've mm-hmm. said this to my friends Paul and Chad before <laughs> the show has begun, but now I'm telling the fans. Let the record show the Dom has not read the book. This is not an instance where we saved the reveal of someone not reading the book for the episode like we did to Chad at the beginning of this series of podcast episodes. What a, what yes, a goof that yes, was. Yes. I, was we're, we're adults now. We know we're lactose intolerant. We're coming forward. <laughs> Um, and, uh, I did watch the episode though, and I've seen this episode before and I did read a synopsis of what's going on so I can talk about it, but I will talk about the show a little bit, but I'm going to let you guys start with the book. Okay. Yeah. You'll you'll be our silver screen, uh, uh, expert if you, if you will. Yes. 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 I felt, I just want to, I'm going to give a general feeling right up the top. This is probably one of the best Goosebumps books. Huh. Shit. Huh. Um, but there is a lot of dumb stuff in it still. Yeah, I think that's fair. How do you feel about that, Chad? Uh, I, I think I agree with it. I, I also remembered this book pretty, I don't know if I say fondly, I had a similar memory in my head of not stopping to read the Goosebumps books, but uh, mm. I do remember reading this one, and I think it was the first time I kind of like saw the cracks in the foundation. Uh, okay. In like, terms, like Dom did. Dom stopped reading. Yeah. Them. Well, just in terms of like, because you of know, it. okay, I, I get that this is a gotcha book with with surprise moments at the point of like, is this even scary? I don't know. And for whatever reason, okay. this one hit me more than others in that regard. This one has a lot of dumb fake outs. That's what I think is bad about it. But, 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 I think this one has the some of the scariest imagery. Of a book. Yeah, of a sure. Of book. Well, if you like different animals on different animals' body parts, then you are yes. going to be absolutely terrified. Chimera? Terrifying in this. So many chimera. See, and this is where drawings I'm going to come from. Drawings of chimeras are horrifying. Like old drawings where it's like, this is what a chimera, chimera is. Scary. Well, mm-hmm. not, to, not to be a, na- a naysayer or, you know, a devil's advocate or a, a, a dom's advocate, maybe, is a better phrase, is... I actually had this feeling when I was reading it again that I have never really found the monsters that are just animals with different body parts scary at all. Okay, I, I'm with you. I know what you're saying. If, if you're playing think... that Impossible Creatures PC game where it's just like put a panther on a lobster's body, I'm like, this is this that's is just silly. This is just silly. I don't think that game was supposed to be scary. <laughs> sure, but that's what I think of every time I see uh, sure, a chimera sure, I see, or like a basilisk, and it's described as just like it's like a rooster with a snake tail. I'm like, okay, uh, culture that only knew thirty animals. I guess this is the scope of our imagination. Ah, it's big, Chad. It's a big animal. It's a big chicken. <laughs> a big chicken with a with a scorpion tail, a cockatrice. Very scary. Very scary. Here's the thing: if you did, if you you never grew up being afraid of being attacked by a creature that would kill you. I mean, I was scared of that all the time. Oh, I think I see what you're saying. In terms of real world Ch- stakes, are like, is a bear going to get me in South Bend, Indiana? Probably not. The guy who freaking first drew, what is the lion one with the scorpion tail? Oh, see, I thought uh, that was a chimera. A manticore. Oh, that's, that a ma- chim- no, that's a manticore. Manticore, manticore, you're right. First person who drew a manticore was probably kicked out of his village. <laughs> he was like, never come back. That is so scary. My <laughs> wife got mauled by lions. My son got bit by scorpions. <laughs> and the bat wings? Did you have to put bat wings on it too? There's bats in our cave where we live and they scare the shit out of us every night. Is this thing real? You're gone. Someone tell me right now if this thing is real. I need to know about it. <laughs> yeah, it, would, it, it was probably very... Very scary to first. True. true yeah. True, true. So, Absolutely. You know. We had a thing here, Chad. Dom and I had a, a creature that lived in our area called the Jersey Devil, which. Oh, I'm familiar. He's real. He's real. He's real. He's a very scary <laughs> creature that we all fear. Uh, he's very real. Well, also, so yeah, we I mean, had. So I think this this one struck a little close to home because of that. But again, the Jersey Devil's real. So I don't know why that's a, a metaphor here, because like. If you don't uh, acknowledge the Jersey Devil all. and pay him taxes, he can take you away. Like that's all it's understood if you live on the East Coast. I mean, if the Jersey Devil pays taxes, then let him live in the <laughs> then I say let him live. Because Jersey what, what taxes. Is, Jersey taxes are bad. <laughs> um, but uh uh so yeah, this is a book about two children who get to try out a theme park for the very first time, mm-hmm. right? And this isn't just any old theme park. This is 
a monster theme park. Shock it's, Street. It's named it's named and fashioned after their favorite movie franchise, the Shock Street franchi- franchise, which obviously RL is making up each aspect of every movie as he goes along and writes this book because he just keeps throwing shit at the wall I, nonstop. I, I could not figure out what what is the the genre of the Shock Street films. Like Chad, there's no cohesion. There's no way to know what any. I, I don't know where this began. I don't know <laughs> give me a rundown. Give me a rundown of the creatures on Shock Street. There. Oh. Okay. I'll go, I'm gonna go from the wiki here, just because there's a cut. There's a nice list. Because well, there. also because they're just fucking okay. nonsense, random. They're like they're like Mad Libs. There's Wolf Girl, Wolf Boy, the Totinator, Ape Face, the Mad Mangler. There's all kinds of stuff, man. I don't know. I don't fucking know, Dom. There's there, so many there's things. Skeletons. Those guys. I mean, those all sign, kind of sound like they live on the street, same street together. I mean, I, don't, I haven't heard anything too. <laughs> okay, crazy. well, all right, here, let me. Let, if I Fair. may, this first, the first part of this book, which is what brought up my feelings about these, just kind of like amalgam uh, animals that mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of, is mm-hmm. a chapter where you're seeing a a crab with a wolf face. I don't know. Oh, that no. is horrifying. I, I guess it just sounds so silly to me. Like, I, you know what's the scariest part? The scariest part, though, is you see this thing, and then in the movie, because you're watching a movie with well, the kid. This is my point. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, they, they kill the creature, Dom, and then they eat it, and they eat it by dipping its meat in butter like a crab, and they just ew. They, that is scary. That is scary. that's scary. But okay. That's I guess. creepy. That's I, I might be this, the my, minority in this. So, like, the first part, right? We don't know it originally that it's a movie scene. It is described as if our main characters, Aaron and Marty, are experiencing this, which is mm-hmm. a... But, and then we're, like, after the chapter, like, oh, this thing with lobster claws and uh, a wolf head is coming at me. Ah, I screamed. I sat up in my seat. But I'm like, I, I get it. It's another Goosebumps fake out. But, but like... Yep. I don't know it, what, for these to work. I need to be able to picture them in my head. How you would shoot that to be believable? I guess you know right, what I mean. What that, oh, no, I'm with you. I'm with you because I was reading it and I knew it was a fake out. And I, I figured out it was a movie theater very quickly. And, I, and I'm an adult reading a children's book, so I can't say that I feel very smart doing that. But but you did do it. <laughs> but I did do it. The way that Aaron and Marty describe it, or I guess it's Aaron, is that like it's like as if she thinks it it's seems real. Like it's from, it, it seems like it's from their perspective, right? Yeah, as if she is the you know those that old footage of like one of the very first films ever is that black and white footage of like a train coming at the screen and people in audiences yeah, like and people, dove and out of the scream. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, unless unless Aaron is that, I is she <laughs> stupid? Like it seems like well, she thinks it's real. Well, well, Chad. Okay, uh, I would say that a normal child in one of these books probably not that stupid. But what the ultimate reveal of this book is. Maybe. Well, okay, but that adds, that adds a lot of other questions. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. So let, let's yeah. move through. But let's well, let's, I lo- let's get to the I, I also setup, love, right? Yeah. I, well, okay, so they go up to her dad's office after they see the movie. It's, they got to see an early preview because their dad or her dad uh, makes a makes uh, rides and and attractions at theme parks, and he's working on the Shock Street theme park, and he invites them up. He uh, emotionally abuses his daughter at the end of chapter three <laughs> by, telling her, by telling her he has very bad news and, and looking as if he's about to cry and then treats that as a fun joke that he does to his daughter, which is really fucked up. Uh, also, maybe I got to say, in terms of l- fake cliffhangers, maybe one of the worst ones in the entire series. It's Wait, so he was like, oh, something, so I have bad news about your mom. No, but he's he's on, yeah, he doesn't even say on, that part. He just says, oh. I have some bad news. On that cliffhanger, and he, was, he was just on the phone too, having like a very serious conversation. And yeah. Then he, and what was the what was the bad news? Nothing. There's no the bad, bad news. news. He didn't was, even have a joke. He just was, like gotcha. Was, gotcha. Gotcha. It's like that's the laziest it. cliffhanger I think I've well, ever seen in the series. That's, that, that that's even more troubling, knowing the reveal. Right. Right. Like you are sinister. We'll talk. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Well, and I, I also got to say, there's a part in the beginning. Uh, that is a line that I thought was one of the worst written lines in a Goosebumps book. Ooh. But when you know that, when you know the reveal, it makes sense. But at the beginning, it is so stupid that I was like, "Why would you even put like? How did you not edit that out?" <clears throat> okay, they they bump their 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 grab assing as they're walking out of the movie, trying to trick <laughs> each other. They're, they're grab assing real hard, and they bump into a lady, and the lady goes, 
hey, what's your problem? You and your twin are real weird. And she, she like calls out that they're twins, even though they're not. And she says this very weird thing to them about being twins. And I was like, what the fuck is that line? You twins should be more careful is the exact line. You twins, a natural thing for a woman to say. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's how I speak to people who <laughs> have a person who looks just like them. I mean, they say, you doppels. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, so, all right look, maybe, let me throw this out here, guys. What if, uh-huh. what if we maybe jump to the reveal? Because I back. think I think so much of our conversation is going to be like analyzing this through that lens. Because I also remember, had remembered like the twist. This is one of the most like memorable reveals I, to I me. I gotta say, okay. I gotta say I did not see the twist coming. I didn't know. Okay. It is I dumb. Didn't. It doesn't it's really kind make of on, sense. It, like it does. It's it's kind of the cherry on top of well, the craziest kid ice cream someday yes. that, that was at, ever made. Before we get to the reveal, I would like to ask Dom one thing. How did they introduce it? Were they in a theater watching a movie? No, they weren't. They just open on kids going through basically a workshop of monster um, masks and such. And then the father appears and okay. begins to tell them. And, you know, the father does look like a mad scientist in the <laughs> casting. So it's pretty good. However, just I, I just want to say a couple notes about the TV show because uh-huh. I only have a couple to share. Okay. Uh, one, uh, the outfits the shock streets logo totally was taken from nickelodeon studios what? uh logo okay. uh uh two uh the park that they shot this at they had about 45 dollars worth of halloween decorations <laughs> to make it look like a halloween park <laughs> it is weird and it is like i mean they're they are trying but it looks weird i see the logo um, you're fucking right holy shit yeah that's freaking nickelodeon studios <laughs> uh but three uh, in kind of a neat little nod, uh, Shock Street, obviously uh, Elm Street, um, and you know they're on the ride. The kids are on the 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 cart going through the beginning of the ride, and one of the first things they see is uh, a man getting electrocuted in the electric chair. Wow! And the guy says, "Say goodbye, Freddy." Oh, and he pulls cool. it. Uh, he pulls the lever on uh, a man in an orange jumpsuit, and he's shocked to death. Is that supposed to be a Freddy Krueger reference? I believe it's both a Freddy Krueger reference and a Shocker reference. The other Wes Craven movie from the '90s, where a man travels through television after also, being electrocuted. Also, a capital crime punishment on a children's television show yes yes he was electrocuted and it looks like he was wearing a recast like a a skin tone recast of the uh haunted mask yes i see that oh, I interesting see that okay like yeah. they just took the prop and reused it mm-hmm. but yeah those are those are the big notes from the television show so let's let's get, go on should we do the reveal i mean like so they do, do go- the reveal you already we've already decided do the reveal i mean there's there is stuff to talk about it in the story of what happens i uh, mean it is it, i don't know i don't i don't I just don't want to jump to the end and then have nothing else to talk about. Oh, no. About. Well, yeah. well I think about. you can talk about... I think the reveal is so interesting because it's such okay. a reveal okay. that it will... It, it, you want to talk about it with each point. No, sure. I, I got sure, like sure, 10 sure. things in the first two chapters alone based You're on right. You're the right. reveal. So, All right, Chad, reveal it. So, well, I mean, you go... I, tell me if this is the wrong way to set it up and reveal. Is that they go through the, the amusement park and mm-hmm. the entire amusement park, we know this is animatronics. Uh, mm-hmm. The robots and 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 really impressively eat your heart out imagineering uh, uh, robots. Oh, and yeah. at the very end, uh, our our kids are like, "Oh no, we're we're not going to make it. We're we're totally here at the end." And they die again. <laughs> it's like they they run for help and are hit by electricity. I think it's the same electricity that Dom is referencing about "Say Goodbye, Freddy." They go into the 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 Shock Rose House of Shocks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're hit by electricity and fall to the ground uh, and Aaron does the same thing and then suddenly Aaron's father comes out and reveals that the two children are robots that have stopped that working built. that he built so he is their quote dad but they're not working properly because of their uh, guess chips in the back of their head uh, and then yeah. as soon as he fixes I, them I love, I yeah. love to I, he, he talks about noticing that there was something wrong because in the end of chapter 3 she asks about her mother and he's like, oh, I knew something was wrong because I made her. She doesn't have a mother. And mm. I just love that. I was like, 
I was like, what? Like, wouldn't you just program her to think she had a mom? Like, what, couldn't you just do that? Like, right. What, this, is the, this is the issue. So the biggest shock is not only is, no pun intended, is all the animatronics robots, but so are the kids to test it. They're not, mm-hmm. but they're not part of the theme park. They are just test bots. They're test bots, but I think they're also, Chad, the impression I got uh, was that they were also making a movie, another Shock Street movie using these robots. Okay, see, that's, all okay, right, so that, now that leads us into the conversation about the overall plot, because the, the, the idea that these children are robots, while cool, this is the one where, like, where 10-year-old Chad was like, but, but why? <laughs> like, but, I, I get it, that's cool, I don't know why that needs to be a thing, it was already spooky. Like, it adds so many questions and ideas to the entire book that is probably more interesting than the book. Chad, you were right. I actually just went to the end of the book and it said, hey, Mr. Wright, it was a great idea to make robot kids to test the park. Right. So I was wrong. It wasn't about making no, a you're not, it was totally your, your the No, your part makes more sense, no, they're, they're, Paul. They're in, I, will, I will say in the synopsis I read, it's it was revealed to the kids at some point that they that, were in a movie. That they were being filmed for a new shock street movie yeah, yeah. So it, it's revealed to them but they're they they believe themselves like Haley joe osmond and ai to be a real boy or whatever mm-hmm. like they, <laughs> is that yeah i think that's what happened in the ai it's a very confusing movie uh so it's let's been like, a while but so yeah, let's rewind right. back or flip the pages <laughs> that's me that's the page sounds going by to <laughs> yes when they're just going to visit their dad after seeing the movie so let's take this filter now that these are robot children who don't know it the entire time mm-hmm, mm-hmm, they go mm-hmm. see a screening of these movie what is series up with that why did they do that as robots they go to visit their dad in the office as robots uh, like th- and then there are some things where maybe maybe the writer of this had some really good foreshadowing because yeah. it's like the descriptions of what the the t- the kids look like, including being called twins, and that they look nothing like mm. their dad, usually just feels like page filler. This time is right, like, oh, right. they look so similar Maybe because the- they're fucking robots. Chad, good fucking point, Chad. I think someone used the tropes of Goosebumps against itself. Wow. <laughs> Defeated Goosebumps with Goosebumps. Wow. <laughs> Holy but, shit, Chad. That's yeah. great. Well, I mean, it, it helped to remember that that twist reading through this thing again. And again, like, sure. I agree with you, Paul. There's a lot, like, everything that happens in this book is interesting. I mean, they are. Well, here's, here's the, here, the, like, the best thing about this book, and it's something we talk about a lot with these books, is this one is one of the goosebumps that gets right down to the scares, like, right yes. away. They don't, yes. they don't pussyfoot around, they just throw you into the theme park. And there's scary stuff happening right away. And at least there's scary stuff happening. And it's not boring kids being boring kids. No, I agree with that. I really appreciated that. And I would take this type of book over all of the just like slow prank marathons of the previous ones. Uh-huh. Should all the kids in all the Goosebumps books be robots? That's the question I'm <laughs> Sure. If, if we can if, have more bodily harm happen to them, if them being robots, that sounds great. <laughs> I, I mean, would love a compromise somewhere in the middle there. <laughs> this is this is the equivalent of in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon making the Foot Clan members into robots so that they can slice them with their swords. Mm. That's what this is. Mm. RL should have just at, after this one should have been like, I've got gold here. I can kill the kids. <laughs> now. Yeah, they should have had a Frankenstein rip the boy's head off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here, here's the compromise, Dom, because you want to compromise. Robot robot bodies real child minds and hearts minds and hearts heads heads and heads and hearts yeah like the brains are real so when the frankenstein rips the head off he's not killing the kid he's just pulling the real head off the real head can be attached back to the kid but there is blood yeah there is blood blood. and they feel the pain they feel real (laughs) pain (laughs) they feel it in their heart (laughs) and their in their head and yeah their brain receptors are going off going feel really bad right now feel terrible Feel the worst pain you've ever felt in your short child life right now. <laughs> so give me a list of some of the things that these kids go through on the shock the shock ride. Tour. The shock tour, as I'm going to call yeah, it. Yeah, because it, it is really a the equivalent of like a Universal Studio tour through just kind of horror tropes. Yeah, yeah. They do the cool haunted house, which is okay. There's not a lot of really scary stuff that happens there. There's a really bad fake out. There's a ton of fake out pranks by Marty, the friend of Aaron. 
uh, throughout the whole thing. He does some, some of his worst pranking happens in the haunted house. I, I guess but the scariest they, part of the haunted house, Paul, uh-huh. is the implication, and I don't know if that's part of the bit or not, that it's a tram, right? It's like, and they, yeah. they set it up earlier on the, before they go in, uh, yeah. that there's no like handlebars on the tram. Like there's no... Like yeah, there's no belt. safety. There's no safety anything. So it turns into a roller coaster and they almost might fall out, which is probably a design flaw, not part of the ride. <laughs> I mean, either they're testing it or you're right. It's part of it. And it's part of the torture that's for these kids that definitely have real human heads and hearts <laughs> and can feel the pain. Did you guys watch Nothing But Trouble like more times than you should have? As yes. I, yes, absolutely. I never saw it until my adulthood, but I believe that all children who saw it as children are irrevocably fucked up. It is very bizarre, but there is there is also a roller coaster that when you're on it, it will grind you up and spit your bones. The bone yeah, stripper evil roller coaster. Yeah, the evil roller yes. coaster. Which is what yes. this roller coaster that they're on is like. It's very yes, much that's like what that. that's what I, that's how I got us to nothing but trouble. But anyway, <laughs> what, what what I also read that a child falls into a grave and zombie hands touch him. Wait, what is it? Yeah, later on in Shocker and Shock Street, he falls into an open grave. Oh yeah, oh that that's one of the scariest scenes in it. He falls into an open grave. the The girl Aaron pulls Marty out of the open grave. And then he, they are attacked by uh, tons of zombies, which start to emerge from the ground, and it's terrifying. It's a terrifying moment. Uh, and- uh, also, not sure if that's supposed to be part of the ride or not, though. I'm very confused about this. They, part. Well, so that's the thing. They're supposed to be on this ride, but they're not supposed to get off. But as we know, with kids, you tell them not to do something, they do the opposite. So I think they got mind fucked by by <laughs> Mr. Wright, Doctor Wright, and he mind fucked them into getting off that tram. And, and then, also, did he teach them fear? <laughs> did yeah. he program fear <laughs> into he, them? He, like, he, there's this, so many questions. This man created an incredible like, artificial intelligence, but his only use for it is to test an amusement park? This reminds me I of Big that's... Hero 6, where the kid created the most <laughs> incredible invention ever made in mankind, and they they use it to... what. I, I don't even want to actually go into it. It's bothered me, <laughs> that movie. But anyway, this is the same kind of situation. It's like the thing you built to test the park is way more advanced mm-hmm. than anything anyone's ever created. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, not only that, I've got to say, even before you know the reveal, uh, the park itself is decades above anything we have even it, now. It's really like, funny because you're right, Chad. It's, it's like the, the tech is far beyond. Uh, they they go through all these crazy events where like giant mantises attack them, wolf boy and wolf girl chase after them. My Dan favorite... Aykroyd's nose wiener comes <laughs> out. Wiener from nose the flies out of them. <laughs> hot dog train comes by and gives you free hot dogs. <laughs> a book starts doing stand up comedy. <laughs> so I I think like my favorite part though is a director named Russ Denver uh, comes out at, at a certain point when all all seems lost. And reveals to them that they are in a new Shock Street movie they're being filmed. Uh, and they believe him and he tells them that they just need to go through uh, Shock Rose House of Shocks, uh, which isn't real. It's just it's just a set and they'll be able to exit the park. And uh, all this amazing stuff, like we've been saying, has been happening. All these incredible practical effects. And they're heading to Shock Rose and Aaron turns around and looks at the back of, of Russ Denver. And there's a fucking electrical cable coming off of him like all these other things are so wonderfully made he creates a fully believable man named russ denver <laughs> <laughs> but he can't hide the power cable that's coming out of the back of he can't be wireless he's got to be corded in <laughs> Here, here's here's my reasoning paul it, uh-huh. it is that at this point there's like a whole uh, Truman Show type thing going behind the scenes. This is a real Westworld yes. where like a whole team is watching the the test run of the mm-hmm, robots, mm-hmm. right? And at this point, things must have. There's no way these are all the events that were supposed to happen to this sure, yeah. test run because yeah. they're trying to escape and they're climbing over a wall. And by the way, they fall into like quicksand at one point. So is the quicksand just like a ju- a stunt? Yeah, I think at this point. D- a doctor dad, mm-hmm. doctor dad is back is back is behind the scenes, quickly just trying to throw together another robot to keep the narrative going. He's just like <laughs> you think uh, Russ. Den- you think Russ sure. Denver was an impromptu robot? I love that. I love that. <laughs> it doesn't look like the kids, but send him out there. <laughs> I love 
love it. I love it. No, because like, what's what? What's the plan? Because that's a really cool thing to find out. I guess that you are as random kids uh-huh. who think your kids are not robots are going to be using your real scares as part of the next movie. That is cool. Sure. Not cool. Uh, a legal nightmare. Because you. what if they don't sign away the rights? Like, you just wasted all of this time and Very money. Very true. Whatever. Fine. We're not going to get into that. Uh, and child endangerments, you got to have, like, a tutor on set mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for a set amount of hours. Could, this is yeah, how you Hollywood can't, works, people. You can't terrorize them for eight hours straight. They have to be taught halfway through that terrorizing. It has to be four hours of terror <laughs> and then four hours of not really learning in your mm-hmm. trailer. That is the rules that we have set up. But, like... The, the the idea that what like that every kid will go through it and be offered a, a fake movie part i'm so confused during this event of reading this i thought about a moment that i had with chad or sorry with dom when i was out in la a couple of years ago visiting we went to disneyland and dom remember we got stuck on pirates of the caribbean <laughs> we heard the same part of yo ho ho over yes, and yes. over i i forgot about that i must have blocked out that horrid memory of being stuck in that ride <laughs> and uh was reading this and was brought back to that instantly and i thought about it uh tonight. yeah it's weird being stuck in a ride and also especially in pirates because you're surrounded you, by like, water. look up at the ceiling and you're like i guess this is like a dome and you start to kind of like understand <laughs> where you are and then you kind of like realize that you're like in a kiddie pool yes, <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> the the tiny the boat with a bunch of adults you're like what the hell yeah the illusion yeah you just see really like a, a coke bottle float by you in the lagoon you're like Wait, yes this is... and then you realize that some of the kids next to you are also animatronic to <laughs> test the ride um but i was thinking i was thinking of the tram ride from universal that we went on chad where uh, the Rock fired a Gatling gun at us, and it was like <laughs> maybe a week after another mass shooting. And I was like, I'm not comfortable with this. <laughs> That's like, yeah, oh, the one where you get to see all of the Fast and the Furious actors do one take and one take only. Oh it's yeah, great... and then there's like a, just a party going on, like when the ride opens, and then um, who's the uh, Tyrese comes out, and he's mm-hmm. like, get out of here, we're gonna do the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. They're going to the tram rides here. Come on, get out of here, you party. <laughs> yeah, hologram video girls show up to dance in a garage with a car and nothing else and hey, you're leaving cool, that party. Is to, it a cool car though? To sh- yeah, oh yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a hologram. It was like a 2D hologram. It wasn't a real car. They could have maybe made it a real car. The King Kong part of the King Kong part of that tram ride is good though. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. You know, what they really need to do is have those, those tram rides connect to each other like it be the Fast and the Furious one, and then as you go over on like the uh, you know the four hundred five LA chase sequence, King Kong comes next to you and like kills the Rock. That would be cool. That would be cool if King Kong killed the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so I, what I love about this book, though, is we do get to see a child die. Finally, we get to see a child die <laughs> again. Finally, finally, again, they give it to us like once every thirty books or something. Mm-hmm. We finally got to see a child die. This- Just kill the kids. Just kill them. Kill one kid for us, RL. <laughs> it. Oh, was that the was that the end of the point? Just the kid died. I thought there was more to that. that no, point that's not. That. I'm glad a kid. That's died. about all this book gave to us. I mean, look, I I gotta say the imagery scary. They, I was getting annoyed at some things like when they're 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 running away from wolf boy and wolf girl who are werewolves, and as we all know, werewolves are incredibly jacked and fast. And they're <laughs> are they muscular? I guess they oh, are muscular. They're buff yeah, as hell. they're yeah, they're very strong. And they are cha- they're being chased. And Aaron feels the breath, the hot sour breath of one of the werewolves. And they're cha- they're trying to run to get onto the tram. And they trip over each other, which another nice illusion at the beginning of the book that they talk about them tripping each other. Uh, they trip over each other. And then still, that's the end of a chapter. It's like, oh, they tripped. They're going to be eaten by the very fast werewolves that are chasing after them right now. <laughs> the very fast buff very werewolves. Very fast buff toothy werewolves. And they don't, they don't get killed by them. They get up, they stand up, and then continue to run. So it's just one of, the, one of those terrible fakeouts that I hate where it's like, peril! Oh, but it wasn't that bad a peril, actually. They got away. Sure. It actually wasn't well, peril at talk- all. There was no peril. No, it was not peril that, this is my problem. Like my two, my two big problems is that like this could have been maybe the best book yes. of all of Goosebumps, but just the the setups 
are are hit in a weird way of like revealing stuff before way before it needs to be and then vice versa so like uh i gotta say by at least like a third way into the to the amusement park we know that everything in the park is animatronic we know that when they go through what was the house with like the bugs in the cave cave of the living creeks yeah the cave and that's where you encounter the giant mantises which which would uh which would be terrifying but like since they already know they're robots you're like okay now we're just on a spooky ride like Mm. everything that's happening to us this is part of the ride and until we have to maybe think that the rides are gone wrong if there had been like a single part of like let's just say this is part of the narrative of the park right Mm -hmm. like a a a doctor or maybe the director uh what's the name dr dennett what is it mr denver dr dad like oh sorry dr dad mr denver Denver. russ denver yeah like if if mr denver had run out as part of the ride and been like Guys, get out of here. The robots, the 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 non-violent chip is broken. You got to run. And that's like that the game cool. of the park. I would get why the kids are scared and me the reader are like, "Oh no, these monsters are going to get that them." That would be really cool but, if they did that. But you're but you're given like as they go in, again, would this would be an amazing park if it's real. They give them small little like red. I'm picturing just like the NES guns, like the uh duck hunt yeah, guns. Zapper. Zap- yeah, little zappers. The zapper, they're giving them zappers and they say like shoot at monsters that you see in the old scam way, which is awesome. If that was real, I would go there every day. I was pissed that the guns didn't work. I was really looking forward to the kids killing some monsters with guns. That would have been well, fun. Well, yeah, it, 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 it kind of works. It kind of, it, it's kind of like Astro Blasters from Disneyland, the whole ride. It's What's just that? like, yeah, shoot those. the guys. Is Astro that the Toy Blasters Story is one? the one where it's Buzz Lightyear and you're just in a yes. little cart and oh, you're wait. just going yes. around a black light area and yeah. you just shoot targets mm-hmm. i remember going on that now with you it's honestly pretty fun yeah it is it's cool. yeah it's bringing one of the best rides i have in disneyland i i would love a i i mean to use real world experience uh for friend of the podcast uh aaron walkie uh mm-hmm. for his bachelor party i took him to a thing in vegas where you could like with airsoft i'm probably talking about on the podcast with airsoft bb guns like go through a big fake uh like uh arena where men dressed like zombies and padding will charge you and you can shoot bb guns at them that's like, fun it's, it was incredibly fun and i would love any version of that where i get to pretend i'm in a like horror movie shootout but this is like the opposite of Chekhov's gun they give them the guns and then, and they, then they finally right, get to use them right. to freeze both creatures but then the guns just don't work well now it, now i know what we have to do for your your bachelor party so that's that's gonna be something that Give we me have a, to put together. We go, we go shoot some monsters. Yeah, we're gonna have. Well, we're gonna have to shoot some monsters. I'm gonna have to get it set up. So I know we're gonna do that. But <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm complicated. Willing, there were probably to, like ten or twenty actors. I'm willing to wear twenty blankets and put on a werewolf costume. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm with you though, I, Chad. I, I was I was a little annoyed that the guns didn't work. I really wanted to see them at least once work right well yeah you should at least have the gun the rule of Chekhov's gun is if your gun's in the first act it needs to be fired in the third act and i guess they pulled the trigger but it not doing anything i feel like invalidates Chekhov's gun exactly exactly they fucked it up because i i I was waiting for them like i I was like i was just gonna have a cool moment where because these wolf boy and wolf girl again are very jacked and are going to fuck them up so I thought that would be a good way for them to <laughs> overcome that obvious deficiency in these children versus the jacked werewolf people. Sure. Or or just going off that, have it be that they have the guns. Mm-hmm. The, they know these are robots. Mm-hmm. But as long as you shoot them with the gun and it's really easy to do, they won't hurt it's you. It's a Westworld and then they It's Westworld. Yeah. And then the guns get broken. Yeah. Or they lose them. And they're like, oh, now we have no way to stop these creatures. Heightened stakes. Instead, it's just like... Oh, this didn't do anything. It's just dumb. This doesn't matter. Dom, what? Is, so we've pretty much covered the book. What? What's the differences here? What does the show do? I can't even imagine I mean, how the, they would handle this. The show just does this on a smaller budget. They're just constantly on like a like um, storybook land kind of like ride where they're in a cart, and uh-huh. then they get to Shock Street, and they were like, "Oh no, Dad told us not to go on Shock Street." Uh huh. Um, yeah. So I mean, essentially, a low budget version of the book happens. But there is a post-credits ending. It's not post-credits. It's just before the credits come. <laughs> out. Um, uh, it's a cold ending, I guess. Not cold. Anyway, I'm just going to keep telling I got, you what happened. I got here. what you're saying. I know what you're doing. Yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, the, 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 he's put. He's like, ah, oh, geez. I guess I'll we'll call these ones, you know, uh, Aaron and Marty too. And you know, I, I guess I'm building <laughs> new robots. These other ones, something went wrong with them. And then the 
old robots wake up and he's like, what? I powered you down. And then the girl says something like, everything wants to live. <laughs> and then, <laughs> is, that a, is that a callback to the episode at I, any point? I don't know. I don't. I, I, it, it, they, it, and then the boy says, robots want to live. And then they start walking toward the dad and the dad goes, no no and then it goes you know it goes to the credits you know so oh, i mean that's what happens is that the robots wake up and presumably destroy and dismember dad gotcha. okay uh, that's cool that's actually way cooler i like yeah. that way more also, also i'm just i'm just scanning the the wiki that talks about uh, differences in the book a little bit and t- tell me if this is true dom like it says that a difference is that shock street is instead of like the book, the Shock Street's like a movie franchise. They like, oh, this is so much better than Shock Street Six. Yeah. So it's it's a series, and the in the TV show, it's a studio like Troma, uh, which makes that's a better. lot more sense, doesn't it? Doesn't mm-hmm. that seem? Yeah, it, but it's like all the Shock Street movies. Yeah, and 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 it's, Shock Street is more of a court. Just to be clear, it's more of a okay. Cul-de-sac. Shock court. is it more of a cul de sac? <laughs> Uh, Dom, I found a list of uh, monsters. If you want to hear some more monsters from the sh- from the Shock Street series, sure, why not? We have the giant <laughs> praying mantis, Wolf Boy, and Wolf Girl. You Ske- already named those ones. I'm gonna. Come on. There's gonna be repeats. Skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Skeletons, yeah, just yeah. skeletons. By the way, the, the talking skeletons of the tram are like. A, yeah. So we're just doing Vincent Price bullshit now. Yeah, they're all just laughing like Vincent Price at them the whole time. Uh, <laughs> Mad Bangler, which I, I I know I already said that one too, Dom. Piranha People, Wolf Crab, which is Chad's wolf favorite. Crab. Wolf Crab. It's boring. It's just two animals stitched it together. Is, There's nothing yeah, it's, creative about it's it. It's stupid, and they eat it like a crab. It's not terrifying. The scariest thing <laughs> is that humans are willing to eat the monster at the end. Toxic Creep, Toadinator. I know I already said that one. Electric Eel Woman, Shock Row, Ape Face. Toxic. Uh, the electric electric eel woman does have an illustration poster in the oh, show, cool. and it kind of oh, looks like a Junji Ito creature. Oh, neat. So oh. that is kind of fun. It is a little scary looking. Oh, that's neat. I like that. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, you can find the episode for bootleg on Daily Motion. I think. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Dub, you're gonna love this one. Toxic Wild Man. Toxic Wild Man. I do love that one. That I would watch. Good. There is there there was a there is a, a a Shaw Brothers movie called like Oil Man or something. Uh huh. Um, it's quite bizarre. Interesting. But anyway, uh, it's probably oh, inspired. Re- th- there's two more that I got, or three more that I got to read. Sweet Sue, Great Gopher Mutant. The best one though, Captain Sick. Captain Sick. <laughs> Captain Sick. He's just not feeling real well and wants to lay down. The scariest thing is that your body breaks down eventually. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is scary. It's very scary. I'm looking uh, at some screenshots from this episode because I didn't watch the TV one, and I think not only did they reuse the haunted mask, I'm seeing at least like it looks like uh, the masks from Calling All Creeps. Uh-huh. And a few other, yep. like, yeah. I, I mean, I get it. That's also kind of cool to reuse them, but very much just these are the props from the other shows. Yeah, there, there was another moment of the cart. Oh, when the cart is arriving, it says, "Viewer, beware! You're in for a scare." So oh, again, nice. the television show embodying more tropes of goosebumps more than goosebumps itself. Yes, but uh, anyway. I do like this image of the piranha person. That's a cool. A cool man. Yeah, a cool it kept, they kept playing the same sound effect over and over again. It, it was like <laughs> it's like a sa- it was like a monster sound effect that had two different sound effects, uh-huh. and they just kept playing that one audio file again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> like they're like, this is the two sounds it makes. Uh, uh, but That's yeah, great. they didn't even bother to like cut it up and use the first half again. And sure, then the second. they were just like one two one two. Is there uh, anything Dom in the show? Because I'm again, I'm just kind of skipping around like. I see a shot of what looks like Dr. Dad, and uh, it looks like all of his workers are just identical uh, blonde women in ponytails, as if it's that ro- like Robert Palmer music video. For yes, a- yes, there is. There, there is <laughs> Addicted a moment, to Love. There is a moment where uh, uh, maybe twins, they're not twins, but they kind of look like twins because they have the same outfit with their hair pulled back. Um, 
beautiful Canadian women, I guess. That's what, <laughs> that's what they were going for. Let's, that let's just Canadian assume women work at this place. If he's making children to test out his parks, he's he's got some ghost in the shell, like love bots assisting him. Yeah, all he's as, as making well. some beautiful Canadian women back there. <laughs> He's always wanted to just go on a date with one. So now he can go on a date with two. <laughs> uh, so what do you guys think? I mean, honestly, like as far as a Goosebumps <sighs> book goes, I did not get a chance to read this yet again. But this one kind of sounds like it delivers a little bit more than Dilly Dally's, it has which a- I think like is yeah. kind of the kind of the, the, the litmus test for whether it's good or not. Right. This one delivers and it has good imagery. And I think the twist ending is actually pretty decent. I didn't, I didn't see it coming. I was actually really annoyed at some of the twists that I did see coming, but that one, uh, that one actually took me by surprise, and I liked it. So I think this is a better one. I, I, I'll with you, Paul. I think like with some might, it's still pretty good. It's got some, some pretty obvious bad thought processes in terms of the, I, the, the reveal came later. Yeah. To the point of like, I wonder if he realized at the end they should just be robots. But uh, it still has like a ton of stuff happening every other chapter, yeah. uh, and I wasn't bored. Right, uh, it was more just like, huh, strange choice there. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd put it in the, in the higher echelon of, yes. of Goosebumps. Yeah, it's books. up there. Mm-hmm. It's in the upper third of Go- of of Goosebumps books, I would say. Yeah, and again, Robot Mantis more terrifying than real giant mantis because a real giant mantis isn't going to do anything to you except unless you're another mantis right and if you fuck it then maybe it'll kill you yeah yeah you're just a person you're fine but robot mantis will fuck you up no matter what it doesn't care exactly it's exactly. a robot it hates all humans i'll say this though <laughs> i love this book but i would not smoke i would not smell a dog's asshole for it mm, and there that's you have fair. it folks that is how you know how good it could be <laughs> if you know. Uh, I think I asked a question last Goose Buds, Buds episode um, asking for oh, stories yes. of yes. when people had Fear P come out. Yes. Yes. That's and we right. actually got a few messages. Okay. Uh, if you want to contact us, you could reach us uh, at GooseBuds at gmail.com. We're also on Twitter at GooseBudsPod. But we got a few emails. Uh, I'm, I will read to you boys right now. Please. Uh, this one... Uh, Despite saying, uh, well, this one's subject is, it's not about fear pee. So, well, okay. This is about a so video that game. is the opposite of what I called for. <laughs> I wanted urine stories that were, you know, freaking came about by fear, you know? It's a hot video game reference, uh, a, re- a referral. We will look that up later. We should also just do a mailbot, mailbag at some we point. We do have to do we a mailbag We should definitely episode. do mailbag. Yeah. I want to also do mailbag for Camp Goosebuds. I think that would be a lot of fun. Oh, shit. Different, different post offices. All right. So we do have one uh, from Patrick Smeltzer sent us an email that says simply fear P. <laughs> Uh, and well titled I'm liking where this is going this is better I, than the last we, know, we know what we're getting into <laughs> better than not fear P definitely better than not fear P uh, Patrick writes hey guys Patrick wonder Pat here so I was about 19 years old at the time and I was staying over at a friend's house one night around Easter Ooh, it was around 2 a.m. this is scary this is scary already. this is already uh, Easter is not normally a normal sleepover weekend I gotta be honest because yeah. you just have to go to church next oh, day yeah, that is right. true uh, but uh, however I do want to just make a note to Kevin let's just get some spooky music please oh yeah bring up the spooky music <laughs> Kevin what scares you as music put that if it's, you know, if it's spin doctors, whatever scares you. No, no, no. It's got to be, I'm thinking scary sewer. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah. That's where, right, P, sure. that's where P goes. I'm, I'm, so when you say scary sewer, I'm picturing like Primus. Uh, oh, yeah. Primus. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, I'm down with that. I'm also just thinking of like Freddy, like where Freddy lives. I know it's, uh, like, uh, yeah. it's like. You're thinking of like where Freddy pisses, right? Like it's yeah, where his heart right. and piss comes out. Because he lives in the yes, boiler exactly. room, but he pisses in the scary sewer. <laughs> there's no there's no bathroom in the boiler room. He has to piss somewhere, no. though. He doesn't yeah, even pull his pants out. He just pees room. through his pants, which makes it even worse. <laughs> Ew, he smells oh. like piss when he comes after you. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. you're trying to open your pants with that hand? No, thanks. Jeez. Anyway, 
So Patrick writes, it was around 2 a.m. Scary music, please. <laughs> and we were getting kind of hungry. So we are on our way to a local a local Sheets to get food. That's Sheets with a Z. I'm pretty sure that's a local it's a Pennsylvania. regional store. It's a Western Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. Yeah. 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 As we opened his front door, I noticed a little plastic bag that wasn't there before hanging on the doorknob. And Fear P came out. <laughs> <laughs> it was full of fear pee. Wait, what? Is if, that what it came out? If no, there was fear no. pee in that bag, that's terrible. <laughs> it's like a ding dong ditch kind of thing, but it's just a bag of pee. <laughs> if he opened it up, if he opened the door and the fear pee bag exploded on him, and then he had fear pee thinking about the diseases that could have been in that fear pee, extra scary. Mary. Oh my God. This is all right. Look, guys, we're not even like halfway through this letter. And I'm, I'm shaking in my, my little boots. I'm shook. Uh, <laughs> fear pee is coming out <laughs> fear pee is a tiny little bit we were in living room the whole time and didn't notice a car hear the screen door open or anything guys i'm we fi- opened I'm, I'm fissing i'm fissing right now <laughs> <laughs> we opened the bag and there is a single chocolate cross inside with a bible verse saying something about quote looking down upon the street what <laughs> that's what fucked up. that's fucked up his house is uphill from the main road so we're both just scanning the street looking for anything. There was nothing there, nothing at all. We ran to his car where a couple drops leak out of me and we, and we hung out at the sheets for like two hours considering what to do. We even took the chocolate with us as a safety precaution. I, hope no I guess in case it. like chocolate vampire comes at you, you can like use the cross. Yes. Wait, they uh, ate the chocolate cross? No, they didn't. They didn't eat it. They didn't say that. They held oh, okay. on to it. God, Not uh, yet. Patrick, Not yet. He's, there's a few more details. Patrick says, I went home, and he made his way back into his house. He called me when he got near. As it turns out, one of his dad's co-workers had put it there as just an Easter gift thing, and we freaked out over actually nothing. Oh, Patrick. Uh, you, no, we, you, you had plenty of plenty of ground to scare. Plenty of plenty of ground for fear P to come out a little, and that's that's fair. What were you gonna say, Paul? I cut you off. No, I was gonna say who would not have fisted themselves in that situation. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you're it's fight or flight. <laughs> and when you're running, you're flighting. Yeah, and, and you gotta you gotta uh, release as much pee as possible for two reasons. Less weight. Uh, yeah, <laughs> to carry, and two, it'll cool you down so you can run longer. <laughs> so you can run like a processor. So you, <laughs> fear P is the what is that like? What is that glue? <laughs> Arctic that you put silver, coolant, Arctic, coolant gel. Uh, yeah, it's the coolant yeah, yeah. gel of your body. It's Arctic silver Arctic, for your body. <laughs> yeah, but fear P is the Arctic <laughs> silver of your body. <laughs> Well, thank you Pat, for writing thank you in, for sharing. Th- thank Patrick. you for sharing your PRP story. That was thank wonderful. You. Do we have another one? Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, that is unrelated. That is unrelated. That is unrelated. So we were going to have to save these for a mailbag because uh, you guys have been great to send over stuff. But uh, we should w- n- no full fear piece stories. Please submit anything. <laughs> Fear P you or know, not, I, to goosebuds at I've got a, I've, I've got I've got a prompt just based off of our experience at the Ren Fair. Yes. Tell me, tell, give me a story where you were at a place that was unknown to you. Uh, you know, your first time there, and you're with a group of people, and you got separated, and you were lost. Mm. Oh, oh God, that's too real, Dom. That yeah, happened well, to me hey. at Ren Fair. I mean, you know, I, I just think that, you know, that could be interesting. I'd like to hear those stories. Those are scary real life moments where for a few seconds you're like, I'm never going home. Sure. Yeah. Also, please let us know if yeah. you're still lost. If you're still trying to find your group. <laughs> if you're still out there, <laughs> we can reconnect you. This will be like the, one of the happy segments on Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah, we'll, yes! we'll solve a mystery. Oh. I, uh, I think we should do a mailbag episode very soon because I think we could have a lot of fun, like, Doing what we just did, reading some fear pee stories, reading some stories about people getting lost, and then just have general questions and we could talk about, uh, you know, some fun stuff. I think that'd be a really good episode. That I'd sounds great. That. Uh, speaking of future episodes, I think this episode is about done. Yeah, I think we got to wrap it up. Right. Guys, I have like two things to plug. Can I plug them? Plug. Yeah, man. Okay. Number one, I was on the new episode of Loose Lips. A couple of my friends do this show called loose lips 
you can find it at loosemeat.biz. <laughs> I'm on episode 98. I believe the episode is called I Love Capsules because I tell a story about <laughs> playing through Shenmue when it came out. And uh, the one of the things toys. I loved, yeah, I loved to collect the capsules because they were like Sega. They were like from other Sega games. There's a yeah, Sonic you can Sega. get and a Knuckles and everything. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah, yeah. It was cool. Um, but yeah, so you can check that out at loosemeat.biz dot biz or wherever podcasts are downloaded loose lips 98 and then i also have i started a instagram account and a twitter account for my website comfy junior so it's comfy jr on instagram comfy underscore jr on twitter and i'm just making memes They're from funny. this book of wood engravings there's some funny they're little stuff ima- they're little image uh little image joys like bite-sized snickers it's like delicious little bite size Snickers. Fun size memes. Fun size. You memes. don't even have <laughs> to unwrap them. They're in that bag of. Oh, you guys unwrap your, your candy bars. Oh, the best loose, loose Snicker bites. The, yeah. the little bites of of joy that you don't have to. Oh, when you get you take all the work out of it and you can just you rub your finger on all of them as <laughs> yeah. you try and get one. <laughs> yes. Hey, I I uh, I also wanted to plug that Pretend Friends season two are um. Our real play tabletop podcast uh, just wrapped up. Season two wrapped up. So now season one and season two are done. They're both separate stories. You can listen to them. They're complete stories with a with a with a beginning and an end. They go through the whole arc, so you don't have to worry about feeling like you you got to go into something else. You can listen to season one on its own. Take a break. Listen to season two later. It's a great time. We'll be doing a crossover with this show. Yes. In a little bit. Where, in the future, in the future, where we're going to be role playing ourselves in a goosebumps, in a goosebumps, we, and we've already set our goosebumps. alignments now, so we already kind of know what our we know our what characters our, would do, and what our, our motivations trio. are, yeah. yeah. Our and I think like. it should probably happen at Horrorland or Shock Street or something Kevin makes up that is like that. <laughs> I just I imagine think we're in. <laughs> I just Kevin imagine right Kevin, now is listening like, he's listening fuck. like, fuck, I didn't do any of those. Shit. <laughs> Shit. I, I think Kevin over. has a plan where uh, it's going to be just the let's get invisible house and there's nothing really interesting other than the invisible mirror. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kevin, right now, can you add any sort of audio teaser, be it as act, you know, be it as acute or obtuse as possible to tease what that will be? Please, Kevin, please do it. Please. And please do right it. Right now. What are you up to, Chad? Oh, real quick, but I did also want to say, real quick, before Chad does his thing. No! No, 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 no. Chad, go. I'm sorry. I'll do my thing. No, go ahead. Finish, 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 Paul, and then I'm going to prop Chad. Finish. I was joking. joking. My thing regards this show, actually. So Chad should go. Chad should go. (laughs) So I'll I'll pump you, Chad. After all that joke, I have nothing to plug. Uh, (laughs) Chad, you do. You got a life that's fun and enjoyable. Say what you're up to. (laughs) Uh, I am uh, in terms of stuff I've been making uh, nothing new recently has dropped though I am trying to uh, start spinning up the wheels uh, for Twitch streaming again you can follow me on twitch.tv slash quantum theory and on most social media uh, Twitter Instagram all that stuff at quantum theory uh, I, I love seeing nice people on the internet who aren't mean to me that's a real cool thing <laughs> that I is love very that nice too. Chad we got a squad up on Twitch we should, yeah. man. Yeah, make a like a little Twitch group. Yeah, I don't know what the hell we're gonna play, but we gotta squad up. Oh, I'm I, I'm I'm about to get into more than did by daylight again. Now that it's like all fixed, it's I'm all about ah, that. Frick, I got I really gotta buy that next time it's on sale. I gotta get on that. What's you can play as they're gonna have they're gonna have Ghostface from from Scream in it now. That guy's not scary. That guy's a teenager. <laughs> He's running at you with a knife. <laughs> He's not scary. He's a teenager. You know what? I will be honest. Uh, when I first you know saw what? the announcement, I thought it was going to be Ghostface Killer, and I got really excited. That would have been awesome. That, that would have been cool. See our Camp Goosebuzz episode very recently for this month, where uh, we talk about what the fighting game that involved the Wu-Tang members, what their fighting styles would be. Very interesting. Yes. Uh, Paul, what, what else do you got going on in your life? I just wanted to say, I just feel that uh, we could use some new reviews on iTunes. We haven't mm. done, we haven't gotten some new ones in a while, so we haven't read any new ones. We need some new reviews to read on this show. If you guys could go and leave us a review on iTunes, even if you don't use iTunes all that often, just just go in, go and sign <laughs> up, fill out a little form and type in some words. It doesn't have to be a lot. Someone just recently wrote, more please 
on there. Yeah, that's fine. It, 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 it's interesting, you know, it, it helps us get on the charts for iTunes because I think they measure with reviews and downloads and plays and whatnot. Uh-huh. But oddly enough, I've noticed that this show has been, I mean, obviously it's been growing, but we, we saw like a spike in, in interest. So if you're listening to the to this and you're hearing us prompt you to leave a review for the first time <laughs> hey do us the favor you know help us out let other people hear our great show that you love to listen to <laughs> in your ears we need new people to listen to the first 20 minutes of this show and be completely look this confused. is about money okay this is about money we need it <laughs> Speaking of money, if you want to support the show and get access to, like, Camp Goosebuds that Paul mentioned, our recurring monthly series. Listen up. This is the important part, everybody. This is what you've been waiting for. Here's how you can help. I like Here's this hype. I like this money. hype up. Uh, yeah, can... I'm just like, I'm just crazy. He's no, crazy fine. for you can... money tonight, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> he he ate a bunch of fucking mini Snickers bars. And he's all hopped up. Uh, yeah, I'm jacked. You can go to patreon.com slash goosebuds. If by supporting us, you get access to the ability to vote on which books we read next, uh, including our adventure, choose your own adventure books, uh, our discord, which is filled with some of the nicest, coolest people uh, I've ever oh, seen yeah. talking online. It's like a chat room, but not bad. It's a chat room. That's not bad. That's not bad. And they also, uh, they know we're rec- when we're recording and they'd like to talk during it and they're doing it right now. Yeah. They like to taunt us while we record, which is like they're counterintuitive us. to a good episode, but whatever guys is your discord. You can do what you want right now. Uh, Swaggy, Yolo <laughs> Squires, Denticles and Cardboard Walk are taunting us. This not is on nice. you guys. If this is a bad episode, it's your guys' fault. Just saying. Yeah, it. you did this. That's patreon.com slash goosebuds. Bad, but I think it's pretty good. So if it's good, you didn't do it, but you did support it on Patreon. So I guess you did kind of do it. So you thanks. did good. You did good. Uh, any, anything else, boys? Uh, I just got to say, once and for all, my final verdict, Meatball sucks. You heard it. Uh, my final verdict is... That Meatballs sucks because it's a the worst Bill Murray movie, but that is also a fair. Uh, I want to say that meat, Meatball does suck um, because if you really loved her, you would have smelled the dog's butthole. That's what I'm you know, talking about. Hey, you know what? If this, after this episode, go to the person you love if they have any sort of pet. Even if they don't have a pet and just say, like, I'll smell any butthole you want. I'll smell any butthole yeah. you want. Just let just tell them. Just tell them that. And even though they don't want you to smell a butthole, they're gonna feel so good knowing that you would. Exactly. Exactly. It's a safety blanket. With that, this has been Goosebuds. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Th- thanks for coming by. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, by the way, we're all robots. <laughs> oh no, my cable got on <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! I have to make Paul two. Jesus. Once he becomes unplugged, he's ruined. <laughs> Can you make him a little less tall this time? I'm a little intimidated by it. If you could, like, take a few inches off. I'm going to take a few inches off his height, but I'm going to add them to his fingers. Sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You know, I yeah. like the massages. Yeah. Well, you know, they're easy easy for him to do when, you know, he doesn't have to walk all the way across the room. He can just stand on the other side of the room and massage you with his fingers. <laughs> well, that's terrifying. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. This episode of Goosebuds was brought to you by our beautiful Patreon supporters. And we'd like to say thank you for the very first time to these new patrons. Thank you, ZB. Hey, thank you, a pair of Scots, both of you. Thank you, Stephen Edwards, both of you, you double Stephen Edwards. (laughs) Danger tits. (laughs) Haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Good old danger tits. Spencer, Thomas, Kimball, welcome to the club. I'm going to tell you all of my allergies so you can know how to take care of me. Welcome, Llama Consultant. Let us know if we need a llama on this show. Marceline Miller, hey, it's great to have you. Nicholas Johnson, sit on down. (laughs) Calamity Carl, get the fuck out of here, Carl. (laughs) No, come back. No, come back in. Calamity Carl, come back in. No, I know. I know Carl. Carl's good. He's good. (laughs) Goose time. Gotta give a big shout out to Goose time. 
Jonas Evan Voldson. I love your name, and I want to know more about you. Thank you for supporting us. We all do. Ripley Newbold, you're a bold new Ripley. I love it. (laughs) And Nathan Whitmore, thanks for coming on by. Okay, now we have the rest of the patron supporters who are our wonderful, beautiful, loyal would never break our hearts ever in the world. <laughs> never leave us ever. Kill Clinton. Funny cat eating a whole pizza dot MPEG. Send me that video. That. Yeah, can we get that video? Please send that video. Stefan Jive Turkey Kuabara. Hollis Hornbeak. Fred Atkins. Nathan Dolezal. David Cron. Chris Birch. Dapio. Mickey C. Michael McDowell. Clayton C. Kyla Tharp. Buddy Morrill. Mike Lanteri. Nick Hinkle, thanks. Joshua P. Robertson. Cameron Murphy Audio. Daniel Kalehas. Jim Greaves. French Onion Supine. <laughs> Jared Mason. That was wonderful, Paul. Thank Martin you. A. Masias. Zanky. Natu Pearl Henderson. Joshua Goofflumps Lopez. <laughs> Rupal Productions. Jobs. Christopher Boyce. Afshi. Mickleheart's Corn underscore. Danky Mix Stanky. Bean Father. Spook Man. Jennifer Britton. Jonas Blotterman. Stephen Ghost Kisser Daniels. Victor. Brandon Rowdenbush. Aaron T. Strunk. Dango Twist. Ooh, that's cool. Brian Wells. Chris Culver. The Dragon Llama. I got a good grip on these zentacles. Drew Applegate. Heath Robinson. John Keaty. Tata Manson. Kramer. Michael Knight. Aaron watching you sleep, Dom Cole. <laughs> Missed him. Phew. <laughs> uh, this is Sleepy Boy 6 9 is... Joe, remember to save early and often, Scott. Becca McWilliams. Stealth Bates. Paul Grasso. Walter Fraser. Joseph Miranda. Read him his rights. <laughs> Taylor Dirks. Slumlord Onion. Scott Collipy. Robert Moon. Patrick Reynolds. Third Sergio. Jason Crooker. Alistair Perez. Miguel Pardo. David Lee Pig, a.k.a. D.L. Swine. Just a pretty good dog overall. Vincent Modica. Christina Doling. Clay Castle. Luke Anutos. Connor Church. Zam Bambino. Calf. Cody Redfield. Matt, Professor Hoops, the half-court goblin, bachelor. <laughs> Randy Hernandez. Trendy Moron. Maddie. Boyo, boyo. Ishak Arafin. Matthew. Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, wah, wah, Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe Chavez. Ryan Mel. Yes. Ryan Melfi. Reinfected. The Puerto Rican Dream. Snickinson Van Pickens. <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> Delightful. It was a nice name. Tyler Penner. Alan Saylor. Kyle Billings. Sam. Jizz Hash. James Royce. Mikey Jello. Actually, I think it's James Roy. Ooh, James Roy. Mikey Jello. Chosen One. Gregory D. Warren. Jin K. Jake Young. Bradford Coulter. Axel Rock. Jonas Engman. Rich Hillborn. Iden Dace. Dylan Vaughn. Shift his worlds. Toothless Barry the Whistler Bostowitz. Nice fucking job. Thank you. Nivaldi. Dan Hanshaw. Joshua Jacobwitz. Justin Wagman. Ryan Chill. Eric England. Nathan Ramick. <laughs> Matthew Little Bro. Cry Bricky. Leviathan. Cardboard Walk. The John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Thank you. Oh, such a nice foundation. Tommy, Salad, Vitch, Hoey. Goblin Library. Eric LeBaron. Rug. <laughs> Andre Villanueva. <laughs> Up in Champ. Reed Steubendike. Alicia Grafe. Solizzo. Anthony Kuabara. Malicious. Carl Kleinesser. Senpai Gods. That's us. Joey Evans. Brock Graham. Nick V. <laughs> Griffin McElroy. Hmm. Griffin McElroy? Podcasting king? I don't think... Something tells me that's fake. The Mm. podcast king is here, guys. Yanni Markovina, the podcast king that we don't appreciate. Ah, the un... The... The... The podcast king who was pushed out of their kingdom far too early, but is coming back 
in the front of a host that will evict Griffin McElroy, Hugh Bolin. <laughs> it's you. And after that, we have Joe. Yes, Joe. <laughs> Elusive Koala. Carewise, Gamgee. Jessica Zimbel. Blake Alvarez. Paul's Christmas Sock, a.k.a. Watch Out for That Dirty Slink, a.k.a. PCS, W-O-F-T-D-S. I don't know what you made me say there. Hope it wasn't mean or racist. If it was, I never meant huh. it. Huh. Okay. Uh, I think it was Paul's Christmas Sock. Oh, oh he Watch abbreviated the thing you said, a.k.a. Dirty Slink, yeah. Uh, so Pixwafted. Cameron Hansen. <laughs> Christian Van Skyver. Swaggy Bones McSkelly Squire. I appreciate Boney. And I appreciate Brookex. And I appreciate that old boss skeleton. And Corey Shelley. And another Joe. Chase Nyman. Jesus Christ. Generally depressing. Low Belly Hate Me. Eten O'More. Jeremy Lowe. Zach Connor. Rocky Raccoon. Hark is a power bottom. That was mine. Mm. Adam Norton. Sure. Oh, fine. did I steal it from you? It's okay, Adam Norton. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, I guess I had to think about it. I'll, I'll consult my, uh, my character. <laughs> Anxious Serve. Avery Whitney. Yeah, yeah. Pallet Town Champ. Christopher Dunn. Valhalla Black. Jackie Ledoux. Foolish for Deborah. Jordan Lockwood <laughs> Carter Glass <laughs> Emma B. Drinking Blue Icy Double ch -ch -ch. <laughs> Oh yeah, I like that I always like the Blue Icy Hell yeah. Noah August Boz Gerritsen Dan Chris, Chris Pittman. Pittman Oh, I screwed you it up dirty I slink. <laughs> You dirty slink I slinked Chris my Pittman. way in <laughs> Chris Pittman Patreon underscore donator dot yo. <laughs> Still in, he had. Joe Tierney. Lady Story Weaver. Mooth Mage. Mooth Mage. I like Mooth Mage. I, <laughs> Mooth Mage is great. I'm going <laughs> I'm going with Mooth Mage. And I'm going to say Moo the Mage just for fun. And Soup Experimental. Will Holmes. And finally, Ryan Stewart. Thank you all for being such wonderful folks who support this show. We greatly appreciate it. And we also have a great time entertaining you. We have so much fun on the show. And we know you enjoy it. So thank you. Totally. Love you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.